Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. I'm Arfa Yunus and you're watching NST TV. So in the studio with us today, we have two guests. The first is Dr. Kiro Bakaran. He's a general and breast endocrine and bariatric surgeon in the Glenagal Spinning with a special interest in managing people with obesity. And our second guest is Dr. Alexander Tan. Uh, he's a consultant endocrinologist in Sunway Medical Center and he has done research uh, in the fields of obesity and that is exactly our topic for today obesity so firstly i would like to start with uh, dr kiru we like to understand what is obesity how do you define it yeah. uh, thank you for having me arfa mm -hmm. uh, obesity is defined as the excessive and uh, increased accumulation of fat in the body mm -hmm. uh, that results in impairment in uh, the normal conditioning of the body itself so it can cause serious medical conditions to that individual. So it's very important for us to understand the causes of obesity uh -huh. and to take steps to try to overcome them. Yes, yes true. And uh, Dr. Alex, yes. um, how serious is it, obesity? I mean, what are the health implications of obesity? Oh, well, I mean, there are plenty of implications. Obesity can affect you from the top of your head all the way uh -huh. to the bottom of your toes. Just like what Dr. Kiru said, it's when you have too much fat in your body all right, and that leads you to have medical problems as a result. It's not just like, oh, I'm a bit fat, but it has got health implications. So the common ones that most people know about, diabetes, high blood pressure, okay? These, of course, are high cholesterol levels. These, of course, can lead on to other things as well, like mm -hmm. stroke, heart attack, Okay, but obesity is also beyond that. Uh, there are other effects that people may not necessarily think about. Mm -hmm. There is a syndrome called the obesity hypoventilation syndrome, where you can't breathe enough at night for the sheer simple reason that you have too much fat in your neck, huh? too much fat in your chest. Your lungs can't breathe properly. The air can't get through your throat properly. All right, then you don't sleep enough. Then when you don't sleep enough, it has so many psychological effects, you feel mm -hmm. tired, you have to take MC, etc. Okay. Yeah. There is also risks towards cancer. There are certain types of cancer which is increased as a result of you having obesity. Okay. Um, and that, of course, nobody wants to have uh, cancer. Yes. <laughs> it can affect your fertility as well. So if you have obesity, your chances of uh, getting children, becoming pregnant, etc. It can affect a woman's menstrual cycle as well. Right. Mm. Um, there are also effects of uh, obesity on just having sheer weight to your legs. So uh -huh. people with obesity have higher incidences of knee pain or arthritis as well. Right? Uh -huh. So obesity can have lots and lots of um, negative uh, effects. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to know whether you um, reach a cutoff of obesity, because sometimes it's, it's difficult to see whether, oh, you know, uh, am I having this excess amount of fat that leads to all these medical problems. Mm -hmm. um, there's no perfect way of trying to uh, give a cut off, but for Asian people, most mm -hmm. of the time, we tend to define overweight as having a body mass index of uh -huh. above 23 kilograms per meter squared. And if you are above 27.5 uh, kilogram per meter squared uh, of this BMI, body mass index, then you're classified as obese. How about in Malaysia, Doctor? Uh, how are patients with obes obesity being managed in Malaysia? Uh, at the primary care level and also at the secondary care level? Maybe Dr. Alex? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, just back to the basics, I think mm -hmm. sometimes in terms of management, um, we have to understand that there needs to be an identification of it as a problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very easy for doctors to sort of say, ah, yeah, you know, okay, la, he's overweight, but mm -hmm. he has come to me for something else. So perhaps they don't really uh, directly manage that. They mm -hmm. see the high blood pressure or they see the fact that this person has got a high sugar level, diabetes or high cholesterol level, mm -hmm. but perhaps sometimes need to look at the underlying problem, which is uh, the obesity. So sometimes the management could be better, mm -hmm. all right, in that we need to identify these uh, individuals. Um, in terms of at the primary care level, I guess uh, it's, there is research actually to say that if a doctor actually identifies and tells a patient, mm -hmm. um, sir, your weight is a problem, all right, that has got real effects, okay, because many times um, patients go, 
there, there sometimes may be an element of desire. Lah. You know, if the doctor saw me mm -hmm. for my cough and cold, but he didn't say anything about this, I should be okay, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess that's one of the things that I would like to drive forward as well, mm -hmm. that if you do you know, um, um, see a patient who has, uh, for us as medical professionals, if we do see a patient, we do need to s speak out and voice out in the first mm -hmm. place. The second part is perhaps on the side of um, uh, the patient as well, okay, yeah. to sort of uh, understand that, look, um, putting on weight uh, can happen gradually over time. And it's okay to put on some weight, but w as what Dr. Kiru said, once it becomes unhealthy, once it, ha once it has an impact on your sugar levels, on your cholesterol levels, on your blood pressure, on you getting arthritis, you know, on you not sleeping properly, uh -huh. uh, you having risk in the long term of cancer, uh, then, then you need to do something about it. True. In terms of treatments, um, I tend to use, uh, on a very simple level, um, three things uh, that uh, uh, patients can sort of do before they reach uh, uh, secondary care. Mm -hmm. So the first is uh, food, mm -hmm. right? Because that's that's a very very big element, True. right? Malaysians yeah. we eat everything, everything, <laughs> all the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, food, you know, you need to uh, uh, cut down on the amount of foods. And you also need to understand what foods you can perhaps eat more of and what foods you really, really need to restrict and, mm -hmm. and cut down uh, upon. So that's, that's one thing. There are healthcare professionals like dietitians that can help with that. Mm -hmm. um, there are many websites, there are many uh, apps even nowadays mm -hmm. that can help you to identify these foods. The second thing would be activity, as in physical activity. So if exercising you exercising, yeah, mm -hmm. if you uh, go out and purposely join a gym, play some sports, mm -hmm. play some badminton, mm -hmm. or even what we kind of uh, do as incidental activity, so walking more in a shopping uh -huh. center, you know, using the stairs instead of the lift, those will also kind of help. Mm -hmm. The third one is not often mentioned, but I think one of the drivers of obesity, and that's why this is also a complex disease, is that we need to sleep enough. You know, a person who doesn't sleep enough will induce certain types of hormones. Uh -huh. These types of stress hormones can actually cause you to put on weight. And this is the kind of put on weight where you don't have to do anything except don't sleep. You know, and that's, that's um, um, uh, an, an aspect of it. And finally, uh, I said these are three things that you, you can uh, do okay, on your uh -huh. own. And finally, there will be um, the last one, which is treatment. And if you view obesity as a disease, mm -hmm. not just somebody is a little bit fat, but yeah. if you view, view it as a disease, then you need to get treatment. And in terms of treatment, there is uh, drugs that we can give to mm -hmm. help, okay? but there's also surgery which can mm -hmm. be uh, done to help in, in yeah. some cases. Mm -hmm. Got it. And uh, what are the treatment options available to help adults mm -hmm. uh, manage obesity? Yeah. So current, currently, I think the uh, the base of all treatment strategy mm -hmm. to manage o obesity has to come from lifestyle change, because I think essentially that's the most important part. Uh, if you do not take proactive steps in changing your lifestyle mm -hmm. by controlling your behavior, mm -hmm. uh, managing your diet, uh, having a more active lifestyle, then the secondary level management options that you have is probably not adequate enough. So, if you've already decided to lose weight, uh -huh. then probably it's good to meet a healthcare professional to direct you in the proper path. So, in taking steps in uh, making sure that your diet intake uh, meets the caloric demand that you actually need. Mm -hmm. So, you've got to assess your body composition and so on. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, of course, being active is a very important thing. Like, uh, I think uh, today, Arfa, it's raining mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. So, not many of us can actually go out and uh, you know, enjoy yes. a wonderful walk mm -hmm. in the park or you know, a jog. So these are some limiting factors that, uh, that affects us. Mm -hmm. And uh, not many people can actually afford to join a gym and so on. So if uh, individuals take steps to try to overcome these limitations, mm -hmm. then of course, uh, you'll have a very good foundation on lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. The next step that you can add on is, uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Alexander is quite mm -hmm. familiar with uh, adding on to uh, uh, anti-obesity medication to try uh -huh. to uh, curb your appetite, steps to curb your appetite, increase your metabolism, and of course to actually excrete probably mm -hmm. your uh, 
uh, increase your fat metabolism so that you actually um, you know bring mm -hmm. out uh, fat from your body. So there are different types of medications that can be targeted to mm -hmm. achieve this weight loss objective that you have. Uh -huh. uh, the next step would of course uh, be in terms of uh, a surgical procedure. Mm -hmm. So in surgical procedures, you have uh, those which are non-anesthesia-like procedures, mm -hmm. that is by placement of the intragastric balloon. And uh, of course, you have surgical procedures which uh, rely on anesthesia. So I'll talk about the uh, intragastric mm -hmm. balloon where okay. you can actually put place a balloon uh, into the stomach, uh -huh. either endoscopically or currently we have a balloon that you just need to swallow and uh, it goes in and then it inflate with about a uh, half a litre of fluid inside uh -huh. and it forms a restrictive mechanism that limits you from being able to uh, eat so you can actually control your appetite uh -huh. and the next That's step interesting. yeah it's quite quite interesting uh, in terms of but we have different types of balloons that achieve this uh -huh. uh, some can be placed for about four months some can go up to about a year and the mechanism is purely restriction Again, they do not work individually. They actually need to be in combination with the lifestyle change because this is where the concept as a you know, total approach uh -huh. actually makes sense. Uh -huh. uh, similarly with surgery as well, you have surgical procedures that go for restrictive type of procedures where you cut the stomach and you actually limit the size of it. Mm -hmm. uh, by doing this type of surgical pro procedures, it's not just by cutting the stomach and restricting the, the amount that a person can take. There are actually hormonal impl implications that actually uh -huh. uh, take part. For so example? For example, like we have this hormone called ghrelin that uh -huh. is produced at the fundus, which is the top part of the stomach. So by resecting that portion, the hormone ghrelin in your body actually comes down. And it's been shown by research that actually it maintains for about one and a half to two years. Mm. Mm. And this hormone is really important for us to feel hungry. So can you imagine, Alpha, that you're actually going around and you know it's towards the end of the day, uh -huh. and you actually don't feel hungry? Uh, you know? so that's this, amazing. Yeah. So this is the 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 magical point of uh, undergoing surgery uh -huh. because it gives you another beneficial uh, hormonal uh, adaptability that uh -huh. actually improves and makes your uh, weight loss more lasting. Mm -hmm. So weight loss surgery can actually keep you off the weight for a certain amount of time and maintain it in the longer uh, duration as well. Mm -hmm. But of course, not everyone can go for surgery mm -hmm. because we have to be very selective. Yeah. And individuals who are really worked up, you know, by Dr. Alex and myself, mm -hmm. then uh, they, when they find that actually they are fit for surgery and so on, can mm -hmm. be offered that as a treatment option. So all of these treatments, are they easily accessible? And if not, what do you think are the access barriers or uh, and gaps? Okay. Actually, uh, the Met, uh, the methods for weight loss are available in uh -huh. Malaysia right now. In fact, they've been available for the last mm. five to ten yeah. years. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing uh, to me is the barrier in terms of knowledge mm -hmm. and in terms of awareness. So, uh, my personal opinion is that probably uh, Malaysians as a whole uh, do not understand that obesity is a disease. Mm -hmm. Like what uh, Dr. Alex said mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, if we understand that uh, you know, currently uh, flu, diabetes is a disease, then we should also be able to understand that obesity has its own signs and symptoms and it does also cause impairment to the body. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it affects your knees, it affects your, uh, you know, in terms of metabolic conditions like diabetes and OSA and so on, like what mm -hmm. Dr. Ellis said. So, if we understand that it's a disease, then I think uh, people will understand more that they have to take uh, proactive steps yeah to try to manage their own health mm -hmm. and so on. So uh, that's my opinion on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, w Dr. Alex, w what do you think that can be done to um, improve the diagnosis and treatment management of people living with obesity? Yeah, so I completely agree. I think the first thing is we need to understand this is a disease. Mm -hmm. This is not just, yo, you know, he's a bit fat, mm -hmm. looks chubby, looks cute. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you look beyond that and see that this person is either having already or is at high risk of getting all these other problems, mm -hmm. you know, um, issues like diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, etc. All those things that I've said, issues with fertility, issues mm -hmm. with earlier death, issues with higher risk of cancer, issues with um, their joints, etc. Then um, you need to try to treat 
uh, that person. It's treatment, you know, it's a disease. I think that's, that's important for uh, healthcare professionals mm -hmm. to recognize. That's also important for um, patients to recognize, not deny, and perhaps yeah. accept as well. Because mm -hmm. if you don't view it as a disease, a problem, then um, it's easy to not be uh, treated. Mm -hmm. Now, other access barriers is an interesting fact, mm -hmm. um, is that many insurance companies view the types of treatments that mm -hmm. I give yeah. and Dr. Kiru, mm -hmm. uh, for example, give as being cosmetic. So they don't recognize obesity as a disease. Mm. If you were to be admitted to Mike's hospital, for mm -hmm. example, and um, someone does a Ob uh, obesity treatment surgery, yeah. it m would most likely not be covered by insurance. If I were to give medications to bring down the weight of this individual, yeah. it would also again most likely not be covered by insurance. They mm -hmm. view it not as a disease but as perhaps something cosmetic. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not. It's, it's a real health issue because right at the definition is this thing causes you to be sick. Right? Yes. Yeah. So those, those are one of the things. Cost is of course also an issue. No surgery is cheap. Yeah. Right? True. No surgery is cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many things that uh, need to be uh, in place as well, mm -hmm. right? That need to be screened through. There are blood tests, uh, imaging, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, x rays, scans, etc. that need to be done to prepare mm -hmm. uh, individuals. So, again, um, that, that also may be something that. Uh, um, if we can find ways maybe uh. to, to bring down the cost of these things, to make things more accessible to mm -hmm. patients who need it the most. I think further down the line, if, if um, people view it as in, if I invest this money now in making myself healthier, yeah. right, then I live a better life and I don't spend the money later on when I have a stroke mm -hmm. or I don't spend the money later on when I have a heart attack. You know, I don't spend the money later on when I need to have uh, operations on my knees you know, yeah. to this one. And if you look at it, it causes all these things. And if you just treat that thing, you bring down the person's weight, right? Yes. You prevent, you prevent so many things. Yeah, true. It, it's mm -hmm. always difficult when, when you talk about prevention because mm -hmm. it's like a person who has knee pain, he knows he has knee pain yeah. and you can treat that. But, you know, if you could reverse back 20 years and do one thing that would have prevented the knee pain, but at the same time, reduce your risk of a heart attack, at the same mm -hmm. time, reduce your risk of stroke, etc. Um, then, you know, it, it, it is actually cost effective, but maybe, sure, yeah. you know, we, we do need to see it not just as, as a, like, uh, oh, he's a bit fat, la, you know, yeah, but right. as mm. a disease. I think that's, that's uh, an important uh, aspect to this. Yeah. yeah to all right, and um, there are many campaigns about obesity, but despite all these uh, health campaigns, we still see a high prevalence of obesity in Malaysia. So, yeah. what do you think that we can do to better address this, Dr. Giro? Uh, first thing, I think I must congrat congratulate uh, all the parties mm -hmm. who are taking steps in uh, doing a wonderful job in mm -hmm. trying to overcome this uh, this uh, global mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, obesity epidemic that we are facing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot already done, but there's a lot more that we can do. And uh, I think maybe the focus point, like what Dr. Alexander was telling, mm -hmm. right now, uh, our main focus in our medicine approach in, in Malaysia is actually to target uh, the effects of what is happening. Uh -huh. That is the diabetes uh, and, the, and the renal failures and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, I think maybe we should target the prevention. So mm -hmm. let's address uh, obesity in schools or in, yes. uh, primary, sc in yes. primary care yeah. levels, you know, maybe mm -hmm. in housing uh, areas, create more facilities for families to mm -hmm. enjoy uh, weekend in the park and so on like that. Yeah. So I think these steps may seem very, s very minute may be very cheap in mm -hmm. cost, but I think it's pretty effective. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps that's the target that we should go. Because I think by spending a lot of money in doing one campaign once a, uh, one day in a year, mm -hmm. we we'll spend a lot of money, we we'll spend a lot of ad on advertising and so on. You know, we have a lot of booths, uh, you know, a lot of uh, campaign jom jom this mm -hmm. and that. Yeah. Uh, the effects are there, of course, but I think it's very short lasting and uh, it's not sustainable in the long term. Mm -hmm. And I think once it happens, the event is over, then people forget about it. So I think we should do something in a more sustainable manner, Memorable. more prolonged. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Okay. Um, 
Dr. Alex, so yep. where do people, uh, people who are overweight or obese uh, can go and seek help? Because like you, you mentioned earlier, there are some who are in denial. Mm. So how and where do they go to, to seek okay. help? So I guess, yeah, the first port of call would be your general practitioner or your doctor. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, he can perhaps recommend some medications and perhaps also uh, suggest certain things, changes mm -hmm. that you can make to your diet. Okay, uh, he may refer you to a dietitian, somebody mm -hmm. who can help to plan out your individualized diet for you. Mm -hmm. Because no two people are, are the same. The machet who comes from a kampong who's obese versus the urban high flying CEO executive mm -hmm. who flies to seven different yes. countries a week is also. Uh, going to be a different creature, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, your primary care practitioner, if you approach him and say, look, I'm having these problems, okay, can uh, help as a first port of call. There mm -hmm. will reach a point sometimes where you do need uh, help uh, beyond uh, that as well. So the dietitian, your uh, main doctor, someone who's an exercise specialist, whether it's in the gym or whether it's a certified fitness uh, in, uh, trainer or physical trainer uh, or even a physiotherapist, yeah. but sometimes beyond those things, um, you will need uh, a hospital type setting. Mm -hmm. And in a hospital si type setting, there are uh, certain other medications that we can use, there are, there are techniques and, and uh, ways that we can help to actually count the calories, admit you, uh -huh. okay, and plan out a diet for you in the ward to help with some initial weight loss. And then of course, at, at the end of the journey, there is also these uh, surgeries that uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Q uh, performs uh, as well. So those are also um, uh, other things. But I also wish to echo what he says. I mm -hmm. think the first step is not being in denial. And I think also, uh, in addition to it, I, I see this as being it's a global problem and it's a problem on so many layers. Um, it's, a, it's a problem on a governmental layer, right? Because the government needs to look after, uh, needs to provide for healthcare, you know? And if you have a, a, a workforce which is too obese, cannot do work properly, etc., that's a problem. But there's also aspects of it which are also uh, cultural as well. Mm -hmm. When I want to make friends with somebody new, I invite him to eat. And even when he's full, I force him to eat some yes. more. Right? Hey, if you don't finish eating, uh, it's a... Uh, it's I will marajo, you know? Yeah, I will marajo, you know? <laughs> but perhaps we need to change that kind of background uh -huh. and sort of say that, look, oh, okay, if you're full, maybe let's talk or let's just have a nice drink or something like that, mm -hmm. which is not, not you know, going to increase your weight, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and, and not force people to sort of, uh, you know, feel obliged that they need to eat. Then there's a societal kind of impact as well. We all like to feed our children. All right, and we need to realize that it may reach a point where it becomes unhealthy, and there needs to be a degree of education mm -hmm. for the next generation, as in um, whether you eat an ice cream or whether you eat uh, a, 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 a bun. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the difference in terms of uh, how it will impact your uh, health as well? Because mm -hmm. you know it, it starts from young these uh, habits uh, as well. So, um, and there are physical impacts as well in the way, as you said, your roads are designed, mm -hmm. your tamans are designed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you coop everybody into as dense as possible with no play areas, right, with mm -hmm. no walkways, you make it, un you know, if it's unsafe for a person to go and exercise, what, yes. are, what are some of the, the issues mm -hmm. uh, uh, surrounding that? And also perhaps, um, maybe also to make it easier for them to uh, bring up this, this problem, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we've had uh, campaigns for men to uh, say, look, don't be shy about uh, assess, um, you know, coming out about erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. But also perhaps don't be shy to sort of say that, look, um, I have a problem with my weight. I mm -hmm. want to do something about yes. it. And also training doctors to say, okay, well, this is the pathway. Mm -hmm. There's a set pathway for you to sort of say that, oh, okay, you've identified now, or I have identified you as having a weight problem, mm -hmm. but here's what we can do about it. I think that that will help also. So there are actually uh, uh, many things, you know. Um, and maybe one word I would also like to say, sometimes it's a bit, um, sometimes a bit to do with choice as well. Mm. People choose sometimes to do unhealthy things like smoke. And I guess on a government level, 
there are ways that you can increase the price of cigarettes, make sure that it's not sold in places where teenagers hang out, for example. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in, in the same way, you, 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 need to, you need to work with government as well to sort mm -hmm. of say that, look, what are some ways that we can help to curb obesity in the same way that uh, smoking is discouraged. Mm -hmm. People still have a choice if you wish to eat, you know, um, uh, excessively, mm -hmm. right? It is a choice and, and if you wish to, to you know, uh, be that way, it is a choice. You have to understand the implications of it, but perhaps there are ways that we can discourage it mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kiru, maybe you have something to add? Yeah, I think uh, another place where uh, I know a common person probably would like to find out details on weight loss and so on, they turn to look a lot into the internet or into social uh -huh. media and yes. so on. Mm -hmm. So I think the presence of uh, certain, uh, especially weight loss drugs that are available there, which are not regulated, and of course, uh, mm -hmm. slimming pills and slimming centers. There's a lot mm -hmm. of uh, things going on. Yeah. In fact, uh, I think you know we agree this is probably a you know million or a billion dollar in industry. Mm -hmm. So, but I think most important for the patient to understand that this is uh, something that deals with their safety, their mm -hmm. lifestyle, mm -hmm. and their health in general. So I think they should take proactive steps to find a, a better, reliable source or a you know institution that can actually cater to the whole. Uh, holistic approach in mm. taking care of them and managing the obesity level. So, uh, places like where Dr. Alex and myself work, we have a multidisciplinary team, mm. and I think mm. that is the way to go forward nowadays. Where mm. we have a dietitian, we have a physiotherapist, we have an endocrinologist, surgeon, all of us sit together in the same centre, and the patient is in the centre, and we work around them and we provide a therapeutic uh, approach that is catered individually for the patient. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the most uh, advanced and as well as the most sustained level to manage and maintain uh, weight loss that is longer lasting. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a better approach for, for patients. The mm -hmm. problem is that they are not aware about this yes. option that's available. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, by us uh, mm -hmm. coming out and sharing this information with the public, uh, probably they will be more uh, hopefully, empowered. Yes, yes yeah. hopefully. And there you go, there are many helps available. So if you are overweight, please seek help for the sake of your health. Dr. Kiru and Dr. Alex, thank you so much for uh, coming here today. Thank you so much. And um, that's all from me. I'm Arfa Yunus. This is NST TV. Good day, everyone.